Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Why is why isn't yours lighting up? That that was gorgeous, but why? Son of a bitch. Because this is not. Welcome back to a couple. Of- <laughs> Are we still recording? Yeah. Oh, we are? Yeah, we've been recording, wow. bitch. Wow. Let's go. Welcome back to your favorite podcast. A couple of pines. Bye. Whoa. Whoa. Today, we're going to do some smooth jazz conspiracies. Now I'm fucking around. Today. Oh, hey, that actually fits into the theme. Does it? To your theme? Today. Yeah, well, that was the point. Yeah. Music and music conspiracies all right we're bad at music i'm no jamie i'm pretty rips. i'm pretty good at music <laughs> J-Mac fucking rips. um yeah check out j max music on youtube and spotify you and apple music uh you will be because i haven't dropped a song in like two years i'm working the on shit it he has on there you will be happily entertained anyway these two have some music conspiracies and i'm gonna do what I do best and say, no, bitch. All right. No, bitch. Kick us off, Captain okay. America. Yeah. All right. We are going to start with one of my favorite people just because of his backstory. Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Linkin Park. That's, that's where they're starting for it. Oh, yeah. It matters, and that's why we're talking about it. I am a firm, firm, firm <laughs> believer. <laughs> I just realized what you said. It does, it does fucking matter. It was a, it was a delayed, a delayed joke. Colin's a firm believer that Chester Beddington was actually lip syncing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not actually the theory. No, no, no it's not the theory. <laughs> He's very know. talented. I mean, a lot of artists whatever, are really, like, actually guilty. Of whatever that. power out there, rest his soul. Anyway, continue. If if you followed him from the start, you knew that he had multiple throat surgeries because of how hard he sang. What the fuck I'm are you drinking, Will? What water. the fuck are you drinking? I'm drinking water on the beer. What the fuck are you drinking? Hey, no bro, good. what the fuck are you drinking? It's no good. It's actually vodka. Yeah. Ooh, couple cocktails, Pod. So, what do you believe in? I keep sending J Mac that I think the reason he sang so hard, the reason he went so well in his deep, in his later stages, in his, right? Well, no, in his earlier stages, because in the later stages, it okay, was but recorded. that goes against your whole. I'll let you finish, well, but here, that goes I'll against your whole theory. So, in the beginning, when he was a hardcore Lincoln Park, I'm gonna sing my soul out. He went through multiple throat surgeries. When sometime later in his career, I think it was two years before his passing, he let up on that and finally started singing the way he wanted to. Singing just like totally wrong. Beautiful, beautiful music. Fans were pissed about that because they're like, where's the emotion? Where's the screaming? That's so fucked up because that is the emotion. And he and he responds with fuck what you think. Fuck your life. I'm going to do me. Fuck you, I was going to say, bing bong. Bing bong. Life, I'm going to do me. Pete Davidson. Fuck your life. So All right. We, Pete Davidson's going to cancel us. Let's keep going oh on God. Bennington. But I feel like the reason he went so, so hard in the beginning. Not on my platform, you won't. <laughs> was because he was trying to get out of whatever Water soiled dark view. TP Davidson page. <laughs> <laughs> okay do it so do chester it. bennington you feel in your heart of hearts he went so hard to get out of whatever dark deal he, he fought so hard it in the end it didn't so even matter hard, so <laughs> but the, the end, reason it didn't even it matter even was matter. because the dark people behind his contract kept feasting off of his life form and his right. platform i mean that's every whatever dark no, deals they want okay so Every contracted musician ever, I, yeah. I to- yeah, I totally agree with what. That's you're why saying. I'm solo, and bitch. I'm totally, like <laughs> independent forever. Yeah, but I. Well, I mean, that's the way to do it now, but that's a different conversation. Um, I think that. Okay, so music 
labels and like people's contracts taking their work and then changing it and changing the vocals and making them sing a certain way and making their tracks sound a certain way that's something that happens all the time well dude look at the case that just wrapped up hashtag free britney bro look at britney spears britney spears she doesn't have a high as fuck baby doll falsetto voice is like no britney spears has like a big as fuck like deep like opera singer voice well she fills the room but like like, yeah but they they don't don't let her do it yeah don't let her sing like that and that happens all that happens all the time um more experience. i mean there's so many examples yeah, no, of it that's just a reason why vanessa carlton a thousand miles they changed the fuck out of that track after she wrote it wait what um who's you know, vanessa that, carlton that one hit wonder uh if i can... oh into the sky oh, and i think time White will shit. pass okay. him yeah. by oh the fuck out of that song. really yeah. no that song is like a that song is like a slow ballad raw vocals over piano and you oh, said i had walk a thousand miles if i yeah. could um no no i thought know. you meant <laughs> and i will walk <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait a woman wrote that, that that's so interesting funnier if that's what i was talking about but yeah no like that that kind of shit happens all the time in the music industry and so to me i just see that as like the perfect rebellion mm. against that i mean that kind of that, that kind is of the perfect but also your your, your rebellion gets super dark so go on with the story so it the way yeah, but i'm just saying i'm i'm on board yeah i'm so on board if yeah. if you if anybody, i'm gonna sing under you anybody who watches this mm-hmm. goes to research will Chester Bennington, you will see that his history <laughs> is very very Yo, dark that was a sick mass joke actually Two thousand miles, <laughs> dude. That'd be so good. I'll work on it. Continue. But his his history is very dark, and original. the reason he got into music our was other to originals express suck. That. So no, if, if kind of rad, you, <laughs> thank you, you. Made it sound like they were gonna be shitty, and I was like, no, these are good and also funny. Don't, don't talk down on yourself. You're your own worst critic. Anyways, go ahead. If, if he's going this hard to try and talk about his past and everything he's gone through. Uh And there's so much hearsay, but also hearsay that if you were to connect the dots would be like, wow, I didn't start the timer again. (laughs) Way too real to be connected to his life. I, I really feel that there is some sort of connection between him singing his absolute throat out of his soul trying to leave whatever because I, I don't know if you know this but i've told jmac when he went to haiti to help save them after the earthquake Wait, the clinton that song that all those people did when the haiti disaster happened yeah that was wasn't he like the guy who did part, that all yeah so the clinton foundation helped rad. fund it. i wasn't saying that to like like meme on it like no that song's cool those people did a good job and did a good thing. Very good people. job. Go ahead. So the Clinton Foundation <laughs> helped fund him. When he got to Haiti, Wait, what the Clinton Foundation. Really? Yes. Yeah, so they helped fund him You're and right. his project. So, so he gets to Haiti. All of a sudden, multiple children start disappearing. They go unaccounted for. Can't find them. Don't know what happened to them. All while he's there. So he That's follows right. the money trail. The money trail leads back to the Clinton Foundation and the people they hired that came exactly that came along with him to help aid him. The people they hired to go with him were actually secret child traffickers. So he starts going ballistic, starts being starts waking up to the possibility and the actual facts that he's being used to the 10th degree. I mean, I mean, imagine, imagine how you would feel if that, if that happened, you know, it's I just lose like the, my level mind. Of, the level of like betrayal and shit, dude. So now he finds that out. He stops singing so Typical dark. Clinton activity. Right? Right, fellas? Stop singing so <laughs> dark. We know it's true. I forgot I'm bleeping all this shit. Also, I decided, activity. also, I decided between episodes, the bleeps are going to be the can crack thing we did. Yeah. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think I've done that before. That's 
I don't that's, fucking know. It's gonna be a first here. All right, I so mean, so typical activity. Where do we go from there? Cold ones is a beer podcast that censors themselves all the time. I don't think they do that. That is true. You guys are ahead of the curve. We're ahead of the curve. Right? We are ahead of the curve. Right? We're usually ahead of the curve, but whatever. Follow sleeping on couple pints pod. Nah, it's facts. Bitch. Follows money trail figures out that all of this is happening because of the people he let into his circle. Now we right. stop singing so harsh because oh, he's finally like, fuck up, this deal. He so starts making the music up. he wants to. People start turning turning against him. Now he is finally so deep in the rabbit hole and so in there that he's about to take all this information that he has and release it secretly or under his name. And that was he the doesn't give a shit. Yeah. The documentary. That's the silent silent children documentary. Yeah. It's a real documentary. We've you talked can about look that. at it. The website's real. So now he gets ready to do that. Dude, his so, his, it's so perfect because it's tying it's tying yeah. into what I was saying earlier about like the seed of truth, dude. Ready? Remember like, how his fans started saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, he was depressed because of his childhood, because of how he was treated." Yeah. So re- he hangs himself by doorknob. I'm so sorry to say it, but that's the way he he, he passed, ksh- himself, himself by, by doorknob. Ksh- we're making a lot of extra work for you right now. We're so editing, sorry. Man. I'm but, so sorry. That's how it is every it's week. But not, it'll be worth it. So I'll he it does that. After all of this happens and people are like, you know, it, it lines up. The guy was kind of sad. It, it, it works out. He was kind of dropping off because, right. you know, he wasn't making the music that people raved for because he was making his music. Because he was Dude, finally way, out of that evil deal. The way that that kind of like, uh, like media and like consumer speculation of like, oh, this shit's not as good as it used to be and stuff. It's like people throw that around so willy nilly, and they don't even think about like, think about how much that must like tear you up as an artist dude like as, dude. A, as a creator to like pour your soul into something and then just like everybody be like you fell off bro it's like bro no no wonder these people end up in the places that they do man a it's like, foundation it's so created by your band to aid people who just went through a devastating disaster just unknowingly like contributing yep. to like and you're yeah you're like, contributing to those like, kids like, disappearing yeah. and you don't figure it out until you follow the money because you find something suspicious That's so and funny. right after that happens you no longer create the dark screamo music of your emotion you start creating the happy music that you feel in you guys, life you guys really were not fucking kidding man this is exponentially more dark than i expected it to be his story is ridiculous about some like 27 club shit for a little while well, think we can of- still do that i've still got some material for that but <laughs> dude, kurt like, cobain jesus christ and um who oh why am i blanking on the other man who helped him out Kurt Cobain was one of his influences, and um, it's the other Nirvana. homie. No, 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 it's the other homie. Kurt Cobain is Nirvana. The dude, Chris, oh. Chris something. Yeah, uh, Chris D'Elia didn't kill himself. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, he's very much he, alive. He he was yeah, helping Chester. Shout out, shout out, life rips. Shout out, bro. life rips. Sorry, strong guys. He was. <laughs> I'm sorry, strong guys. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show you that montage when we cut this. It's so good. Um, <laughs> We were watching a bunch of his clips the other day. Well, the ho ho ho! My God, the house is on fire. That was really... um, no, Chris. He was from uh... Soundgarden. Yeah, because I remember being like, I don't know shit about Soundgarden. That yeah. guy, Chris he's something. He has a mustache. He's working with you Chester Bennington get to get really ready. Up and listen to Black Hole Sun. No, no. Anyway, Soundgarden. But but they're they're working Anyways. together to release the Silent Children documentary. Right. Out of and of course, like I said earlier, not to beat a dead horse, but as all of that's go down at going down, both of them, both of them are are found. One's found dead, and I think the other one was also found dead. No, I think Chris is still alive. Yeah, this guy. Uh, hold on. I'm looking into it. But one of them's found dead, and the other one randomly. Just Chris, Cornell. Chris, Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. 
That's uh, right. Oh my God, he's dead. I told you he's dead. I'm sorry that I'm mixing up my words. See, I'm trying to be nice. Suicide by hanging. See, that's by the kind hanging. Of thing, that's the kind of thing that people want us to believe is a coincidence. No. But if it were a coincidence, it would be one of the fucking craziest coincidences of all time. It's like, that's just too... In, in too earlier convenient. episodes... The two guys who happen to be tied up in bringing down this terrible thing that we talked about in next week's episode that we recorded first, <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna both died in the same way at the end of this episode too, just to be as backwards as possible. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I forgot we were doing that. Yeah, um, yeah, same same. Fu- I mean, it doesn't say by also death by fucking hanging by doorknob makes no sense. Also, I I'd, I'd like to is, say is he a midget, bro? That's what I said I, the first you, time we talked about this. Tall, Are you ready I'm for this, fuck. Will? Are you make ready it for make this? Sense. Dude, make it make sense. Colin. So they Colin will make it make sense, which sucks. And, and they go on to say what they did was they took a bed sheet or a sheet and they tied it on to All this side of the doorknob, went over the top, closed the door, tied it around their neck and leaned forward. Now, if you lean forward, okay. similar to how <laughs> killed, killed, yeah, killed himself. <laughs> Obviously, you there's going to be. The yeah, there's going to be tension yeah. the whole no. way. Oh yeah, no. You just have to do the. You just have to the. Uh, the powerful the, names yeah. associated the, with it. The Sue of of uh, of sides. Yeah. You just have to bleep that because you can't. You I can't just have it. to. You can't say, the. You can't say Sudoku yep. on YouTube. <laughs> you can't. You can't. But you're telling me, peep, there those big name peoples are staying in beautiful, oh, excuse me, hotel rooms. Yeah. And they decide to use that place as their final resting spot by with a doorknob and a bed sheet. Yeah. Also, there's so many oh, other. Cool. Um, oh, wow. That's, that's going to be darker than I thought it was going to be. But if I were if I were in that situation, if I were in like, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm in a fancy ass hotel room. Now's a better time than any to just fucking end it all. Just fucking do myself in. It's like. I'm jumping out the window or something. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. It's like I'm ju- I'm jumping out the phone. Drop a really expensive toaster in a really expensive bathtub. Get up, yeah. yeah, you got a jacuzzi bathtub. Throw ten a, At least throw you're a, getting a back radio, massage while you're radio in the bathtub when the white rabbit peaks. Right. I want to ride. That's like some down. cryptic shit. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you need to watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah, I do. I and then can't you'll understand. I I also can't see two people who are working their best friends. Asses That'd be off. like if both of us died the same way by. <laughs> <laughs> and they're working their asses oh, off to expose this truth yeah. that is any of going us, right under our nose. If any of us are ever found dead by, uh, no, we didn't. No, we we've did. said that so many times. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did it. Every time we talk about shit like this, we make sure that's known. But also, everyone that makes shit that make the. They still, they still <laughs> die by, and everybody's like, oh. Oh we man, just, must like, have happened. Like, oh, man, that's, I'm yeah. so sorry. We do, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, no, there's no shot because he. No, there's no, there's no fucking way. Chester Bennett. Well, there is no shot. There's Chris Cornell. Like, Bad um, joke. To, to relate it to another musician that died. Um, when Matt Miller. Mm. Uh, they, Twenty-seven uh, clubs. Some people thought that. Well, we all know what happened there. Intentionally. Yeah. The guy who the guy who sold him the. The Effie uh, got arrested yep. well, in case um, someone to, listening doesn't know be, that. To be more specific, so something that something that can happen when you're a recovering addict and you're trying to get clean and you relapse is that you go to relapse and you go back to your usual dose. Yeah, and you do too but, much. Yeah, but you've been off the shit for a while, and so your usual dose is too strong, and that, that will make you overdose. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what happened in that family. Well, someone got convicted for selling him drugs laced with ethanol. Yeah, and they are currently incarcerated for that. So it in that's in his aut like in in his autopsy, it came back that there was effie yeah, in his um, C when they when they found him in his hotel room. Uh, he was like in the fetal position with his hands clasped, praying, dude. Like he didn't, he did not want to go. It was like very clear that that man did not want to go. Yeah, because he got drugged. Yeah, yeah. he got fucked. He, he was trying his hardest. Him. I mean, rest his, yeah. rest his soul. No, but like, 
I, I mean, I guess that's that's not super related. Well, that's it's different because it's not. Like would people be. want to make it out to be something but, that's not. But yeah, but I mean, also it's unrelated in the sense that, uh, Wet Weber and Beddington, at least not- according to Colin, got assassinated by they, government officials, they, and it was framed as I don't went through was- therapy and met peace with their demons and their friends and everyone they're related to is like no they weren't suicidal said but multiple as, times as they came to saw, peace but well, yeah they anybody were who's gone through therapy and like rehab and stuff like that though like anybody who's been through that will tell you that it's not a straight line probably not at and, all but but i think that's something that the people who did this took it planned and yeah there, took it because, into because account it's, it's convenient that that plausible, plausible yeah. deniability is like already built in like it just, wor- True. It just works out to further in favor of what it's arguably it's things. arguably a perfect storm like yeah. oh it, 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 we it, already it, have all the reasons why of, they're um, i'm really i'm i'm shocked that uh we, wait neither of them died by overdose right? no both no they were both suicide by hanging stays away from fame to that's go to convenient. counseling or rehab that's that's, that's the point i was making like two two best friends died the same exact way a couple months apart after doing something that would fuck very powerful people over you ready for this no I like the reason people it's too off, but that's why everyone Chester like that's Bennington why i don't get why everyone's like oh doorknob was because they took into consideration how depressed he was over chris cornell's passing by hanging by doorknob I thought it was the other way around. Bro, well, like, go Chris. Chris Cornell went first. Oh. Chester Bennington went second. We've talked about so this depressed. so many times off air. I forgot. Imagine like ending yourself the same way that your best friend, who you're grieving so heavily over, is like that would. That's ne- what I told him. Do that. That's what that I would told never him. Happen. He like, goes wait. As someone who empathizes really deeply with the experience of like depressed people and other suicidal people, it's like. You would never, you would never, never, and like, like in the, as far as like people who are like suicidal and stuff, it's like, A, hanging yourself is one of like, that's one of the most like 50, 50 things in the sense that it could fail. We keep saying Weber, it's Chris Cornell. God damn it. Like, like, you know, it's like, that's something that has the potential to not work and also be really, really painful. They also, you would never. You would never do it. It like it like that. Mm-hmm. Does, that does not add up. Doesn't Especially track. Especially in the circumstances and in the envi- in like the environment that it happened, there were multiple other means that would have been way better and way. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. No. Add, like, they also you know, died in that mind state. That is not the route that you would take. They you also know, died you. almost two months apart to the day. So Cornell was May 18th, 2017, and Bennington was July 20th, 2017. This, okay. From an outside but that's, perspective. But that's say, the oh, thing. He, he did that because he was really depressed on the two-month anniversary of his friend's passing. But that's the perfect storm, dude. Perfect. It's like that just, that just, like, it, that just adds more deniability. But that's also that's these, as we're believing – at this point, these people who made this happen, outside sources being like, "Oh, take two days off. It's it's unno. Add two days. It's unnoticeable. No one, no one will, no one will think anything of it." Yeah. I'm, well, yeah. those two days. And then here we are. Difference. Because what do you, you mean? Take, so let's say, for some. No, I think of, that makes it more sus. It would, but also at the same time, you might as well do it on the same fucking day two months later. Because then it's, oh, here's the anniversary, but two days before? But if you're building this picture of mental depression, why those two days make the complete difference? Because if you're saying, oh, he did it on the anniversary, the two-month anniversary of his friend's passing. But that's what, that's red but, flags. Okay, but that's what but, depression but, would do to you, though. That makes it more believable. Think about but you do it two days before. True. You can't hold out two more days True. after oh, two yeah. months. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you guys have had people that you have cared about that have passed before. Yes, so like, plenty. Imagine, Way too like, many. It's like, so, in the, like, when you're feeling like that, it's like, you know when that anniversary is coming. You feel it. So you want to end it and before. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, I think this could have been a situation where he, like, like, in this case, it's like, you know, looking from an outsider perspective, it's like, 
maybe he just couldn't take living to that day oh you know and it's like, but why like james was saying that is that is something that i think adds further credibility to what you're saying in that it's another blanket of protection another layer of removal from what actually but why could he make it through the first month i feel like that would be harder see right. that's a red flag for right. me why wouldn't yeah you, that is also the point if you're also taking yourself a, away from slow, everything this is a slow process and denying yeah First you're right yeah. you're that right can last a really long time you're right sometimes so will's a debunker this episode let's keep laying it on <laughs> so, okay lay, lay yeah. it on me, I'm, I, I don't have much more to lay on i mean you, that's all i know about this but it, there's he does there's, we've been talking about this since basically the birth of this podcast and yeah. i've always been like we can't talk so about now, this if i, I were to you. pull up a picture and i appreciate will's argument a little more I than, love than yours argument. If I were to pull up a picture, well, not argument, just his rationalization yeah. of what actually happened. I, oh, I like I like to try and still have things pictures? from like a very level headed, like objective. Well, that's what I try and do every week, and then sometimes. No, that's why. That's why I think you guys have. Such sometimes I drink this many like, beers, and then I lose my my mind on Colin. By the way, I'm gonna go get another one, so you two keep doing stuff. So I'm not so sure if I'm gonna about. find it. Will. Oh yeah, I'll get you some more, vodka. some more vodka for sure. This is a podcast about consuming alcohol. Yeah, I'm not drinking water. Oh, found it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Update: Will is not drinking water and wearing protection. Shouts Will. out, Jack Harlow. Here is all the time. Wow. <laughs> all the time. Will has every every all single the time. day. What a life that must be. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus Christ. I don't want to live that life. You ready for this? I mean, I am ready. This is a side by side of Chester Bennington and John Podesta. Chester Bennington looks just like my old English professor. That's weird. Um, but wow, that's really, really uncanny. So now. Um, you should send that picture to JMAC right now so we can like make it pop up on the Bennington. It's going to be like. It, it will be somewhere around there. Bennington struggled <laughs> his whole life with mental health, like we've been talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty par for the course with musicians and artists, if we're being realistic. But so his father found out he was. Just makes it more confusing. Found out he was raising another uh, men's son, and his parents divorced when he was around nine. Bennington's mother, Elaine, had an affair with Podesta. Podesta received a Bennington received a grant from the Clinton Foundation as a result of Podesta's influence. John uh, personally knew he was Chester's biological father, something which he revealed to Chester later on. Bennington had a, a, a major breakdown when he found out that, of course, that Podesta was his father and the pedophile ring going on in Haiti yeah. was tying to the to his own father and the wild. people he funded. God, dude. And when they did a facial oh recognition God. match side by I side. Mean, that is that is uncanny. There was the an, first picture you showed me, it's like no, 80, that, is a fa- that is a father and son. Do will there's an 80% facial recognition match between these two, which is that, only plausible by a biological parent. My brother and I, that are twin brothers, we are fraternal twins. We do not, we do not have like facial recognition matching that is that high. Like if we were put into that software, it would be like sixty percent, dude. Um, eighty percent. That no, only like, happens with a biological that, parent. No, that do, like that does not happen. Like I can't fathom finding out if for some if, odd if it's, reason if it's not his biological father, then we need to do an episode of uh, Doppelganger. Right? I can't imagine. I stepped on the mic and ruined everything. Hey guys, and the camera. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> Whoa, Jesus, what happened? Or it won't because it'll be a funny bit. Uh, a little bit lower. I, I stepped lower. on everything. That that right there to itself just goes that that it, it sends yeah, that my works, mind I guess. spinning. It sends me spinning. Yeah, no, that's like that's it's again just one of those things that it's like if it were to be a coincidence then it's the fucking craziest thing that's ever fucking been a coincidence like ever dude mm-hmm. what the fuck um 
There's some pretty crazy coincidences out there. Who, um, why am I forgetting his name right now? Who was one of the... You know what I mean? It's like we came, out, we came out of the same womb, dude. And yeah. We don't, we don't look anywhere. Yeah, you guys look like nothing that. alike. You should yeah. also send me that. It'll pop up somewhere around Will's yeah. right stomach. Now, I told I told Colin to do the same thing with the photos. Of I know. Family. I heard. That's, yeah. Yeah, I, I even did a little thing. I was like, but Podesta and Beddington do look eerily similar. Eerily similar. Eerily. Yeah. I'm like, talking. There's if undeniably, you, so. undeniably. Yeah. If, you showed, if you showed somebody those two pictures, who had no idea who those people were, had never heard anything about this before, was like, "Hey, uh, what do you think these people's relation to each other is?" They'd be like, "Oh, that guy's his dad, right?" Father and son. Father Easy. and son. Easy. There's like, there's no denying it. Dude. There's literally. No you denying. built this band from the ground up. Beddington built this city, bro. He All built right this city. I love that both of you go into different lines from the same song. Well, I did the wow. line to rebuild the city, which is the appropriate response. Colin, you fucked up. <laughs> that is true. Well, I think it's, we're not going to cut this. We're not going to cut this. I am just so flabbergasted. It'd be funny if we just stared at each other till he was back and then I cut it. Just looked at <laughs> each other and cut it. Who, All right, um, what? What are you talking about? Frick. Who was one of the original 27 Club people? Hendrix. Yes. Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix, Amy Winehouse, Mac Miller. There's so many more, but I love those three people. So Jimmy. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain's another one. But Jimmy was Jimmy. one of the OGs. Believe There's so me. many. Wait, while you make your point on Jimmy, let's Google and it. Of course, if you look into Jimi Hendrix history, you know he had a cocaine issue. Well, he had a lot of he issues. He had a lot of issues. But yes, it was the time. Yes, it was a big issue of those rock stars partying way too hard, going way too hard. But this man... In interviews, was a level-headed human being. Oh, Jim Morrison, Jim Morrison. legend. Uh, level-headed. Mac Miller, Juice World. I didn't know he was a part of it. Yep. Well, he has a song that goes something about the Twenty Seven Club. Like I don't want to. Oh yeah, no. Juice World referenced the club on his Twenty Eighteen song Legends, where he says, "What's the Twenty Seven Club? We ain't making it past 21. The song was dedicated to rappers XXX, who was unfortunately murdered, and Little Peep, who died from an overdose. Juice World himself died at the age of 21. Okay, so he wasn't a part of it. We talking 27 Club stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. it's just we're looking up who's why? we're looking up who's in uh, it. 27 Club goes back to like history. Yeah, Brian like, Jones, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and yeah. Jim Morrison all died at the age of 27 between 1969 and 1971. Uh, Amy Winehouse, dude, that's a really yeah. I shouted that one out. Cool. Kurt Cobain as well. Robert Johnson was the first know, blues. Back with it. Oh, I didn't. I left it on the counter, and I also never filled it. Blues musician Robert Johnson, who died in 1938, is the earliest popular musician who is included in the 27 Club. Wow. No, 1938. 1938. There's either some sort of historical reference to that age that none of us understand, or that is... That's just a ripe age to pluck these famous stars from all of our lives. Well, that's, I think that's just odd coincidence to be 100% honest. Okay, so it's also not a large club that the music industry is like very toxic and like very bad for like the the artists that are very, you know, yeah, and so unless you're Jay Z. I think it's more of a a thing of like uh, that your 20s is just a very volatile time. Yeah. A very difficult time in general. And to be in the public eye and to have all of this pressure from you, like on you from an industry that you 
like have a lot of issues with and stuff it's like i think that's just a kind of a recipe for disaster and it just happens to yeah me. especially at the time that all these people died like because i was pre like independent label all this other shit but uh-huh. it's also unfortunate that now these indie guys are dropping dead at like the age of 20 which we were talking about while you were gone but yeah well to think it is it, a very yeah, it's yeah, it's no, a it's really it's getting even younger now it's yeah like, it's like now it's like the now it's like the 21 club yeah you gotta go hard in order to get famous you gotta drop those fucking bars you gotta be that personality yeah. you gotta have that wow yeah, factor dude. yeah no it's like it's like there's a there's a reason that people think that like people in the music industry legitimately sell their soul to the devil i don't think that that's what's happening i think that it's shit is just so <laughs> fucked up that it's almost at that level oh, really? of like that explanation makes sense because it's so dark and it's yeah it's so like awful and, no like, it's a really dark place people it's like i mean it's just like the shit you were talking about uh with the with lincoln park and everything it's like that's that's real like that's legitimate and it's like like shit is actually just that dark like i get why people that like don't like know a lot of details and don't like understand what exactly is going on i get why they think it's like oh like these people are legit selling their soul to the devil because it's like it's especially bad. especially it's if bad, especially if you're with a label that you don't own uh-huh a label yeah. no, that I mean, that's why there's such an emphasis on independent music now it's well that's also the only way it's the only way you can make money now yeah mm-hmm. all yeah, those no, I mean, take all your money too that's absolutely right. all of those former artists that got huge overseas deals that they didn't look into who was uh-huh. funding their tour uh-huh. imagine who was funding their tour Ch- chester Bennington was one of the only people who was like wait a fucking yeah. second like he's the only one who's giving me this out. money imagine if all these other people figured it out but also the way he figured it out wasn't a tour yeah, yeah. he was doing humanitarian work for that people who true. needed it that is and so then true. and then fucked up people came in and they were like oh wait you figured us out bye wow yeah. Yeah, no, it's really just, it's so fucked because Ooh. every angle that you look at this from, even if you look at it from like a conspiratorial, like assassination angle, there's shit that adds up. Even if you look at it from just like, this is an industry that is just like deeply systemically like flawed, that that has grounds too. It's like, yeah. well, both like, of those, every way that you look at it, it's like, this shit is just, awful and terrible and way way darker than anybody thinks. yeah and both of those things are true which is unfortunate yeah no it's, it's really unfortunate and it's, it's and that's why if you're independent nowadays you're fucked oh, yeah imagine that's why, like i th- i think there's a i think there's a paradigm shift happening like oh yeah no there like, definitely is there definitely yeah. is with the emphasis on independent music and like the whole shit with like like free britney and shit like that it's like i people say that as like i mean it's like oh i have to free britney but it's like yo like that's actually making some really really big strides big like, changes like, yeah like creative control and, and like how we treat big creators and big artists it's like and that's a really that's a really important thing colin actually. wants to say something so bad remember how people used to say the devil has a hold on the music industry no there used to be that old not that word but yeah yeah. like there was a dark hold on the music industry yeah i mean the satanic panic was totally like what intertwined with the music industry what if before independent artists started blowing up and staking their claim and taking what is rightfully theirs each label had a different demon to it that would give back okay, so to now the we're going devil. to colin territory <laughs> that would give so, back to their so almighty you're leader it's like a, it's like us a pyramid sony, scheme sony, for the devil sony entertainment group has a contact with uh with bezel bulb and fucking and fucking google google music group has a has a contract with ball the demon exactly like, and each and of apple, apple music back <laughs> So, and Apple Music has a contract with Krampus. Exactly. And I feel like that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of 
like concept that somebody could make like a really over the top anime out of. Oh, they could. <laughs> Netflix, pick us up, bro. We say this so often. We got ideas. All right. That being said, we're we're already we're, deep. Yeah, we're and I started this like ten minutes in, so we're yeah. So um, hey, forty minutes in. Okay. This has been interesting as shit. This it's also been a couple pints pod. It's safe to say we're out. No, I hate we're out. There we go. The music industry is fucked. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Man, fuck a record label.